You may proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. If we could go back to, input number one. All right. Detective, I have, I believe where we left off. We were describing how the individual fingerprints were marked. The next step is photography. Describe what's going on here for us. Yes. We use a Canon G2 digital camera, which is attached to the scene scope, and that allows us to photograph the images. It's mounted on the top. And each usable latent print was photodocumented. Why did you use the digital camera? This particular digital camera allows us to view with the TV monitor, for one reason, and also all of our digital images for all cases. That's the standard camera that we're using. Is this a high-resolution digital camera? This particular one is a 4 megapixel. And that would be? 4 million, it's mid-range to upper, it's mid-range. For resolution? For resolution. And how does it compare to regular film? Objection. Lack of foundation. Sustained. Okay. Detective, can you, have you had a chance to ever use normal film photography with the scene scope? Have you ever tried that out? No, I have not. Is there a reason why you use a digital camera with it as opposed to a regular film camera? Asked and answered. A regular. Just a moment. Overruled. You may answer. Go ahead. With a regular film camera, a single lens reflex does not allow us to scan the item to search for the prints, where in this case, the digital camera, we can hook the TV monitor up to it, see a live video feed through the camera and be able to do our scanning of the particular pages. All right. Now, I notice in the photograph to the right, there appears to be something like a ruler there. What is that? Yes. Every photograph that we take with a fingerprint, we have a ruler for size measurement. And also attached to the ruler is depicting the actual item number the page number that that latent print was found on, and also the latent number. And who prepares that tag that's to the left of that photograph? In our case, while I was scene scoping, scanning the items, ID technician Torres was also inputting into the computer, logging the prints that were found. So she would mark in the actual location onto a post-it and attach it for me, and then the photo was taken. So this little note was written by ID tech Torres, is that what you're telling us? Yes, in that particular example it was. And likewise, while she was scene scoping, I would write the post-it notes. Did you work in a team with ID Tech Torres in this protocol? Yes, I did. And during the time that you were working with her to examine these various pages, were you always working with ID Tech Torres? Yes. All right, let's look at the next slide. This is depicting identity technician Torres inputting the results that we got onto our reports. Again, they're referenced via the page location and number and entered into the computer. After we completed the photo documentation of each page, we then returned that page to its original sleeve and continued with the next page. All right, next slide. Once we had completed the photo documentation through the scene scope with the particular item, it was then subjected to an anhydrin chemical process, and that's when we went to the fume tank. Each item was removed from a page protector. Again that same binder, submerged in a liquid solution, ninhydrin, hung to dry. Okay, and ninhydrin is? Ninhydrin is a chemical that reacts with the amino acids in your body, skin, and what's transmitted onto papers or other items when you transfer a fingerprint. And so the ninhydrin reacts with the amino acids that are left in that item from your transfer. All right. After the ninhydrin process, each page was resleeved, and placed back into the binder in its original location. It takes a couple days for the ninhydrin to fully develop. You can speed it up with heat, but it's better to just let it cure by itself for a few days. Then we go back and look for development. It will develop a purple color, usually red to purple. So that's what we're doing right now is an examination of each page to see if we have any prints that have developed with that process. All right, let's look at the next slide. Any usable latent prints developed with the ninhydrin process were marked again with a permanent marker and we use the numbered grid again to locate the point on the page for reference. And this is an example of a ninhydrin print. You'll notice it's marked, number 1N, standing for, ninhydrin, and that's, if we had latent prints on the page as well as ninhydrin prints, we would distinguish between the two. So latent 1 would be ninhydrin, latent number 1, and the, or, excuse me, latent number 1N, would be ninhydrin, and just, latent 1 inch for the super glued fingerprint. The fingerprint images were saved into the forensics digital imaging system. 
we made copies of the images, and they were placed onto compact discs. And once those were compiled for each magazine, our group of magazines, they were then given to our Santa Barbara fingerprint examiners for evaluation. All right, so the photographs were placed on a CD-ROM format? Correct. Okay, would you also photograph the ninhydrin developed prints? The ninhydrin prints were scanned as opposed to photographed. What do you mean by, scanned? The particular page was placed onto the scanner, computer scanner, and, with a ruler, and the image was scanned into the system. Okay, so a digital image was created by means of a scanner as well? That's correct. And then these images were provided to the examiners for comparison purposes? That's correct. All right, thank you, your honor. Do you know, and I'll ask for an estimate, if you don't off the top of your head, how many pages in this process were examined? I don't know the exact number of pages that we scanned, but I would say a thousand. Was this a time-consuming process? Very time-consuming. Can you tell me about that, expand upon that? We started, I believe, processing somewhere near the end of August. Specifically in Santa Maria, we had 74 separate items that we were tasked with doing the processes on. The majority of those were magazines. There were several individual pages or centerfolds that had separated by themselves and were not with magazines. Individual manila folders and the like. But once the process started, it's, while you're scanning each page, you have to take usually about 7 scans per page on one side, you then flip the page and scan again. What do you mean, 7 scans? Basically you're taking your page, and the scene scope while you're scanning only allows you to do an area that's maybe 3 inches or 2 inches in width, so you're scanning across the top of the page, moving down, scanning back, moving down, scanning across. And as you come across anything that's fluorescing, ridge detail that's been subjected to the super glue, then we have to analyze it, look at it, see if we're going to use it as a print. If not, move on, and continue scanning, the scanning process. So a magazine would take us a full day of, depending on the number of pages, of course, of scanning and just doing the scene scoping. Just doing the scene scoping, not including the fuming or ninhydrin. The fuming had already been done, but the ninhydrin process still had to be completed. How time-consuming is the fuming process? The fuming process is, as we depicted earlier, for each magazine, they have to hang them in the tanks, fumed. The fuming process itself is 15 minutes, then they let them dry and they continue. So it's just a matter of hanging the magazine pages into the fuming tanks, which they were using three. But we're limited. Each tank has a certain size, so it's just the number of pages that would fit in each particular tank. What about ninhydrin? Is that also time-consuming? The ninhydrin process itself is not as time-consuming as the scene scope, because we're just removing the pages, dipping them into the solution, and letting them air dry. And once we fill up our fume hood with the number of pages, then we have to go back, resleeve those items, and then continue on through the magazine with the remaining items. So it would be, just the process itself would probably be an hour to an hour and a half, but then you have to let it, like I say, sit for a couple of days and then go back and do the analysis on it. In your experience as a law enforcement officer, have you ever undertaken or even heard of a fingerprinting protocol that involved materials of this magnitude? No, I have not. I would object. Move to strike the answer and object. It was compound. Has he been involved in it, as opposed to? Sustained. Stricken. All right. Have you ever been involved in a fingerprint analysis that involved materials of such a large quantity? No, I have not. Anything remotely this large? No, I have not. Have you ever heard, in your experience as a law enforcement officer, of a fingerprint analysis that involves such large quantities? No, I have not. Did the sheriff's department have to bring in extra help to complete this task? Yes, we did. Do you know if there were any time constraints on you? Yes. And you said that you were part of a team. Where did your team operate? ID technician Torres and I worked out of our Santa Maria station. Okay. And who were the other members of the sheriff's department that worked on that protocol? Detective Spinner. Detective Wittenbrock. And technician Shelley. All right. Detective, at this time I'd like to show you some cards that have been prepared and we'll go through them one by one. This card appears to be, this is exhibit number 725. It appears to be card 02 on the lower right-hand corner. Can you identify that card for me, please? 
Yes, I can. That's a photograph of a fingerprint taken from item number 317L, which is a finally legal magazine, December 2000 issue, and that's from the latent print is from page 31, quadrant 15, latent one. Okay, showing you exhibit number 726, itemized as 03 in the lower right hand corner. Similar card? Yes. This is a photograph from item 317 Lincoln, L, finally legal, magazine, December 2000 issue, page 126. It was in quadrant 9, and it's identified as, latent, the number, 1. Exhibit number 728, identified as 05 in the lower right-hand corner. Yes. This is from item 317R, which is a hustler, barely legal hardcore, prior, it was, it was printed prior to October 2000, page 54, quadrant 6, latent 1N. That would be a ninhydrin print. Exhibit number 729, identified in the lower right-hand corner, 06. This is item 317R, as well, hustler, barely legal hardcore, and again, prior to October 2000. Page 92, quadrant 1 and 2, latent 1. Exhibit number 730, identified in the lower right-hand corner 07. This is item 317R, Hustler, Barely Legal Hardcore, prior to October 2000. Page 92, Quadrant 2, 6 and 7 is the intersection, and it's labeled as Latent 2. Exhibit number 731, noted as 08 in the lower right-hand corner. This is from item 317R. It's a Hustler, Barely Legal Hardcore, prior to October of 2000, page 92, Quadrant 6, Latent number 4. Exhibit number 732, identified as 09 in the lower right-hand corner. This is item 317S. It's a penthouse, page 63, quadrant 15 and 20, and it's identified as latent number 1. Exhibit number 733, identified as 10 in the lower right-hand corner. Yes, this is item 317S. It's a penthouse, page 87, quadrant 7, latent number 1. Exhibit number 734, identified as 11 in the lower right-hand corner. This is item number 317T, Visions of Fantasy, A Hard Rock Affair, September, 93 issue, page 3, quadrant 4 and 5, latent number 1. Exhibit number 735, identified as number 12 in the lower right-hand corner. This is item 317U, Visions of Fantasy, Sam Jose's Black Starlet, April 1993, page 10, quadrant 16, and latent number 1. Item number 736, identified as 13 in the lower right-hand corner. This is from item 317, YY, y, Al Goldstein's 100 Best Adult Videos, page A, quadrant 15, latent 1. Exhibit number 738, identified as 14 in the lower right-hand corner. This is item 321A, Playboy, Special Editions, Girlfriends, August 2003, page 3, quadrant 15 and 20, latent number 1. Exhibit number 738, identified as 15 in the lower right-hand corner. This is item 321A, Playboy, Special Editions, Girlfriends, August 2003, page 29, quadrant 15 and 20, latent number 1. Exhibit number 739, identified as 16 in the lower right-hand corner. This is item 321E, Girls of Barely Legal, page 1, quadrant 2 and 3, latent number 1. Exhibit number 740, identified as 17 in the lower right-hand corner. This is item 321E, Girls of Barely Legal, page 7, quadrant 15, latent number 1. And exhibit number 741, identified as 18 in the lower right-hand corner. Yes, this is item number 321F, finally legal, February 2003, page 11, quadrant 15, latent 1. All right. Counsel, Wood, I think you have two 738s. I'm sorry. You identified two exhibits as 738. I don't know where the error is, whether you have two. I'm sorry. 736, 738, I'm sorry. That was my mistake. 14, that is a 7. So why don't we repeat that? 
What is item number 321A? Item 321A, Playboy, Special Editions, Girlfriends, August 2003, page 3, quadrant 15 and 20, latent 1. Thank you, Your Honor. That is 737. And 738, just so we're clear, is item 321A, Playboy, Special Editions, Girlfriends, August 2003, page 29, quadrant 15 and 20, latent 1. Is that correct? That's correct. Sorry for that. Detective, I'm going to leave these up here with you. Did you participate in the location and identification, just for purposes of analysis, but not that you had analyzed them yourself? Did you participate in the location of latent fingerprints on these particular magazine pages? Yes, I did. And there is some information at the bottom of those various cards. Have you reviewed those cards for accuracy in terms of who the individual members of the protocol team were that participated in those various tasks? Yes, I did. And are they accurate? Yes, they are. Okay. Your Honor, by stipulation, we are going to, well, actually, if there's no objection, I would ask to move these items into evidence at this time. That would be. Just so it's clear, there was not a stipulation. I don't know what that meant. Okay. Which items are we talking about? I think he's talking 722 through 741. Is that right? No. Yes. That would be all of them. There was 725 and 726, and there was number 727. We have three that will be identified by other witnesses. 742, 727, and 724. Okay. Otherwise, 722 through 741, with the exception of those three. Okay. The, we're talking about the. 725, not 722. With regard to the poster boards that were shown to the witness, and identified, I have no objection to those coming in. Okay. That's 725 through 741 with the three exceptions. Yes. Those are admitted. All right. Could I have the projection again, Your Honor? Input 1. All right. Detective, can you help us out with the exhibit number of that particular exhibit? I'm sorry. And I am going to move back one. There we go. Please look at the cards in front of you, and tell me, what is the exhibit number of this particular image? Exhibit 725. Okay. And how did you participate in the location of this particular fingerprint? I was doing the scene scoping analysis at the time that this print was identified. All right. And you located this print? I located the print. I marked the print, and put, took the photo of the print. There is a little black outline that we can see on the upper midsection of the photograph, and it appears to disappear behind the ruler and then continue down to the lower midsection of the photograph. What is that? That is the outline of the permanent marker. Did you put that marker there? Yes, I did. All right, and you made this photograph. And what did you do with it? The photograph was made and subsequently placed on our forensics computer, and then a copy of that was made and sent to our Santa Barbara examiner. And after taking this photograph, did you and Detective Torres do any further processing of this particular page in this particular magazine? Once the, this particular latent print, latent number one, if there were additional prints, we would then continue through the page and mark those, and also photograph. And did you do ninhydrin processing of this page? We did after we were completed scene scoping. So did you super glue this page? No, I did not. Did it come to you already super glued? Yes, all the items came to us super glued. And I believe you previously stated that was all done in Santa Barbara? That's correct. And that was done in Santa Maria, this photograph? That's correct. All right, let's go to 317L, finally legal, December 2000. Can you share with us the exhibit number of that image? This is exhibit number 726. And what did you do in, concerning the protocol to locate fingerprints on this particular magazine? Again, I was using the scene scope at this time, and located the fingerprint. I marked the fingerprint with a permanent marker, took a photograph, and it was subsequently downloaded onto our computer and a copy forwarded to our Santa Barbara office. And subsequently, you did the ninhydrin on this page and 
That's correct. And for what it was worth, located other prints as well, but were not concerned about those at this time. That's correct. Same question on this. This would be 727, is that correct? I show 728 right now. All right. I believe 727 is one of the other displays. Okay. Let me just go back one here. Okay. Yes. Actually, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. My mistake, detective. This will be. That one will be introduced through another witness. We'll deal with that later. Okay. Let's go to 728. Yes. 728 is the 317R, Hustler, barely legal. All right. Tell me what you did to locate this particular print. On this particular page, this was a print that was the result of a ninhydrin process. After we had done our scene scoping, the entire magazine was placed in an ninhydrin bath, dried, as we mentioned before, and this particular print had developed as a result of the ninhydrin process. Okay. And I see the black line there. Is that the line you drew around the fingerprint? That's correct. And you photographed this? Or, actually, I guess you scanned these images? Yes, this was scanned. All right, let's look at 729, Exhibit 729. What did you do to participate, or how did you participate in locating this fingerprint? Again, I was scene scoping at the time this print was located. I did the scene scope photography. I marked the location of the latent. It was downloaded onto our computer, and then forwarded off to our Santa Barbara examiners. And also a ninhydrin bath was done on this particular item, as well, after. But this item is a fuming scene scope latent? This is a super glued and scene scope item, yes. Let's look at 730, I believe. We should do that, is that right? That's correct. Again, this is off the same 317R. This is a latent number 2. I was scene scoping this page. I located the print, marked the print with a permanent marker. Again, it was downloaded onto our photographs and downloaded onto our computer and forwarded to Santa Barbara. All right, 731? 731 is also from the 317R, Hustler, Barely Legal, page 92, latent number 4. I also was scene scoping at the time this was taken. It was from the same page as the previous. I marked the image, photographed it, downloaded it to our computer, and a copy was forwarded to our examiners in Santa Barbara, and thus, along with all the others on the same page, were part of the ninhydrin process after this was done. All right, 732? 732 is the item 317S, Penthouse. This latent print was also scene scoped by myself. I marked it, photographed it, it was subsequently downloaded and forwarded to our examiners in Santa Barbara. Okay, and the quadrants, I don't think I've asked you, but the quadrants notated on each of these cards, are they an accurate depiction of the quadrant you located that fingerprint in? Yes, they are. Did you bring with you an example of a quadrant? Yes, I did. Okay, could you, do you have that with you? It's in my notes. Can I get that? If you can pull it out. It's marked up. Do you need some back? No. All right. Your Honor, I have what appeared to be a clear piece of plastic with various crosshatch and grid on it, and numbers. I'm marking it 768. I show you Exhibit 768, Detective. Is that one of the quadrant labeling devices that you used to locate fingerprints? Yes, it was. You actually used that in this case? That's correct. All right. Move to move that exhibit into evidence at this time. No objection. It's admitted. Okay. So I believe we are now at 733. Tell us what you did in terms of locating this fingerprint. Actually, this particular fingerprint was scene scoped by ID technician Torres. I assisted with that. Okay. So is, whose writing is that in the left portion of the scene scope photograph? That would be my writing. Okay. So you would write when technician Torres was using the scene scope, and she would write the little post-it note when you were doing it. Is that fair to say? Correct. All right. Let's look at 734. What did you do to assist in locating this latent? Again, I was with ID technician Torres when she was using the scene scope on this particular item. And again, you wrote the card? That's correct. And participated in the ninhydrin process of this particular exhibit? That's correct. All right. 735. 
What did you do to assist in locating this fingerprint? On item 735, I did the scene scoping, and marked the location of the print, and photographed the item, and was downloaded onto our computer and forwarded to Santa Barbara, and also worked on the ninhydrin process after this process. 736. Item 736 was an item that was scene scoped by ID technician Torres, and I assisted her with the ninhydrin process after that. Okay. Same questions for exhibit 737. Item 737. I did the scene scope locating of the print. I marked the print with a permanent marker, photographed it, and then downloaded it onto our computer and forwarded it to Santa Barbara. Also, the ninhydrin process was completed again on this particular item after the fact. All right. And how did you help find item number 7, or exhibit number 738? 738 was also an item that I scene scoped, located the fingerprint. I, excuse me, downloaded the item onto our, marked it, photographed it, and downloaded the item onto our computer to be forwarded to Santa Barbara. 739? 739 was also an item that I did the scene scoping on, locating the prints, marked the print, photographed the print, and downloaded it onto our computer, and it too was forwarded to Santa Barbara. 740, same question. Item 740 was scene scoped by ID technician Torres. I assisted her with that. And we both worked on the ninhydrin process following that. And this was photographed and downloaded, as was the other prints, fair to say? Correct. Okay. And it is my writing there. 741? Item 741 is also an item that I scene scoped, and marked the photograph, photographed the item, and download it and saved it onto the forensics computer. Okay. Now, I notice a disparity on this particular card. It appears to say, in the upper left-hand corner, upside down, 321D. Is that accurate? That's correct. And the title of this card at the top of the page says, 321F. That's correct. How do you explain that disparity? Prior to us receiving the items from Santa Barbara, the items were, as was mentioned, placed in binders. The binders were marked with just some placards with just the number of the items, not the actual title of the item. And we discovered that the magazine covers had been, the placards had been reversed on two magazines. Okay. And of these prints that I've shown you today, how many prints did that affect? That affected this particular print on this magazine. Only one? That's correct. Who caught this error? I did. Okay. And is it? Is the card as it is noted above item 321F, finally legal, is that the correct magazine that that print was obtained from? That is correct. And it was obtained from page 11, quadrant 15, and it's latent number 1, is that correct? Correct. After noting this error, did you go back and check all the other prints that I've just shown you? That's correct. ID technician Torres and I went through every one of our processed items to make sure that no other mislabeling errors had occurred. Okay. Were there any other mislabeling errors? No, there were not. Detective, I'd now like to run you through some more photographs, and ask you some particulars about the exact location of these prints. And I think what I'd like to do, your honor, is to have you black out the screen for a moment while I change presentations. Thank you. And, your honor. I'm going to object to showing this next presentation. It's cumulative, and unnecessary to the presentation. If we could approach, I could explain it. What is it? It is a run-through of showing the exact location on the exact page that these prints were found. The objection is overruled. All right. There's a 352. I don't know if I expressly said that, but as the court will see when it starts, perhaps your honor will understand what I'm saying. This will take just a moment. Your 352 objection as the undue use of time? Well, it's that, and the subject matter of the pictures is to simply put up more pages of magazines for no apparent reason. They've already been identified coming out of certain magazines. These are graphic images, your honor, and the court should be aware of that, but they are also graphic images with the fingerprints which we will ultimately show are particularly relevant to this case. And I think it's important that the all right. The objection is overruled. All right. Thank you. All right. We're going to go through this relatively quickly, but I'm going to ask you if the item, I'm going to start with 317L, 
which is number 2, and ask you if this is the location where that print was found that you located. Okay? Alright. Okay. If I could have just one more moment. Alright. If I could have the input 1 inch put on. Detective, there is a fingerprint image, item number 317L, with an arrow drawn and a circle. Is that where you found that fingerprint? That is correct. There is a fingerprint with an arrow drawn, and it's rather blacked out, but the arrow is to a particular location on that photograph. Is that where you found the fingerprint on item 317L, page 126, quadrant 9, latent 1? Yes, it is. Let's see. There is a fingerprint noted on that page. It appears to be a ninhydrin fingerprint. Is that the fingerprint you found on item 317R, barely legal hardcore, prior to October 2000, page 54, quadrant 6, latent 1N? That's correct. There is a fingerprint with an arrow to it. Is that the fingerprint that you found on item 317R, hustler, barely legal hardcore, prior to October 2000, page 92, quadrant 1 and 2, latent number 1? Yes, it is. There's a fingerprint noted with an arrow to it. Is that the fingerprint that you found on item 317R, Hustler, Barely Legal Hardcore, prior to October 2000, page 92, quadrant 2, 6 and 7, latent number 2? Yes, it is. There's a fingerprint with an arrow to it. Is that the fingerprint that you found on item 317R, Hustler, Barely Legal Hardcore, prior to October 2000, page 92, quadrant 6, latent 4? Yes, it is. There is a fingerprint with an arrow drawn to it. Is that the fingerprint that you found on item 317S, page 63, quadrant 15 and 20, latent number 1? Yes, it is. I'm going to skip the next two. I'm sorry. There is a fingerprint noted on item 317. I'm sorry, on item 317U. Visions of Fantasy, Sam Jose's Black Starlet, April 1993, page 10, quadrant 16, latent number 1. Is that the fingerprint that you found on that page? Yes, it is. Skipping one more. There's a fingerprint noted with a green arrow. Is that the fingerprint that you found on item 321A, Playboy Special Edition's Girlfriends, August 2003, quadrant 15 and 20, latent 1? Yes, it is. All right, I'm sorry. There's a fingerprint located with a green arrow to it. Is that the fingerprint that you found on item 321A, Playboy, Special Editions, Girlfriends, August 2003, page 21, quadrant 15 and 20, latent 1? Yes, it is. There's a fingerprint noted with a green arrow. Is that the fingerprint that you located on page 1 of item 321E, Girls of Barely Legal, Quadrant 2 and 3, latent number 1? Yes, it is. All right. And finally, there is a fingerprint located with a green arrow. Did you find that fingerprint at that location, item 321F, finally legal, February 2003, page 11, quadrant 15, latent 1? Yes, I did. Thank you. I have no further questions. Counsel, cross-examine? Can I have a moment with counsel? Off-the-record discussion held at counsel table. May I proceed, Your Honor? Yes. Okay. I'm going to start at the end, because unfortunately you're going to have to come back tomorrow, I think. But since we have the technology hooked up, we'll do that. Would it be all right to have the screen? And this was. This was. This was presented to you earlier. And this reflects the same photographs that you have in the set of hardboard exhibits in front of you, is that correct? That's correct. All right. Now, when you look at these photographs, all of the photographs in this set are super glue fumed and scene scoped with the exception of one. Is that right? That's correct. And that one is number five here. For the record, could you find that in the set of boards there in front of you? Certainly, yes. All right. And just so the jury is oriented, your honor, could the witness just hold it up so they can get an idea of what we're looking at? Okay. Same thing. All right, now, that particular image was developed by virtue of the ninhydrin process, right? That's correct. And you showed everybody, and I think everybody's become an expert in this. You take the thing, dip it the ninhydrin solution, you hang it up on the clothesline, and it dries in a couple of days, 
if you don't use artificial heat, correct? Correct. When it dries, you come up with purple prints. Correct. All right. The other thing about the ninhydrin print is that it is scanned into the computer. Is that correct? That's correct. Now, with the super glue, you, first of all, you do the super glue fuming, put it in one of those fish tanks? Correct. And then once the super glue fuming is concluded, you then use the scene scope, and that's where you come up with these green digital images, is that correct? That's correct. So those are digital images taken by a digital camera through a scene scope, through a scope, right? That's correct. Whereas this one, whatever number it is, the ninhydrin print you just showed us, 317R, page 54, latent 1N, that ninhydrin print is readily visible to the eye, correct? That's correct. And, in essence, the picture that you have there is what you see is what you get. You would see that on it page, if the page were here? That's correct. All right. Now, the issue with regard to producing these particular images when you're dealing with the scene scope and the super glue fuming, you have to be careful in super glue fuming not to overfume, correct? That's correct. Because if you overfume, then you can lose a lot of the detail in the print itself? That's true. And in the course of the scene scope, you are taking a picture through a digital camera, is that correct? That's correct. Now, the reasons you gave us for a digital camera, and we can now turn this off, I think, if that's all right. Thank you, counsel, for letting me borrow it. The reasons you gave for using the digital camera are primarily reasons of convenience, correct? Yes. In other words, you're aware that the company specs that manufactures the scene scope recommends that you use a film camera, is that correct? Actually, I'm not aware of that. I understand that they offer. I don't know if they still do, but they actually offered a camera package with their scene scope, which is a digital camera, and they do also offer a 35mm camera. So do you know whether or not Specs, the company that makes this device, recommends that you use a 35mm film camera? That was not expressed to me, no. Do you know that, and what you might do? I know it's the very end of the day, but if you could turn a little more towards the microphone, because you're fading out just a bit there. Are you aware of the studies and literature in the area that suggests that a digital camera will not capture some of the detail that a film camera will capture? That's correct. You use a digital camera because it is easier to scan. In other words, rather than taking a whole bunch of film pictures, you can scan on your monitor and hone in on what you want before you click the picture, true? There would no way that we could accomplish the task of going through the photos that we have by using a single lens reflex camera in the time span that we had. Okay. The question was, though, that you used the digital camera because it allows you, I think you told us on direct examination, to scan with the monitor. Correct. Right? So, in fact, in real time, as your scene scope goes around the page and you find something you like, you can make sure you got it centered, and once it's centered, based on what you're looking at in your monitor, you can click the picture. That's correct. If you were going to use a film camera, you would either have to take pictures of the entire page, or you'd have to look through the scene scope, figure out what you're going to take a picture of, and then click the picture. Is that correct? That's correct. All right. You also said that the digital camera is a mid-range camera as far as the definition. Is that correct? That's correct. At the time that camera was purchased, it was the top of the line that our agency would be able to, be able to afford. Okay. And like everything else, after 18 months, you need to buy a new one, is that right? Everything else electronic, it seems. All right, but in any event, it's about mid-range as far as the definition, is that correct? Correct. And you also indicated that it was a matter of convenience that you could take the digital pictures and then you could simply download them to a disk, correct? They were downloaded to a hard drive and then a copy was made, correct? So the first step is, you downloaded it onto the hard drive for your forensic computers that you have there? Right. And then you would make a disk from the hard drive? Correct. So it's a matter of convenience. Now, you're aware that there are some aspects. Let me back up just one second. I'm trying to do a two-minute subject here without going into detail at the moment. Are you certified as a latent print examiner? I am not certified. Okay. And do you do latent print examinations yourself? I do latent print examinations which are verified, 
That's correct, with another examiner. By somebody else. You did not do these latent print examinations or comparisons yourself. Correct. Okay. But in other cases, you've done that from time to time. Is that right? That's correct. And how long have you been doing latent print comparisons? Approximately a year. Well, a year where I've been doing it with another examiner. I've been doing comparisons before that were then reviewed by other, more senior technicians. All right. So, are you considered a latent print trainee at this point, or latent print examiner? I don't know the status. You don't have any organization that certifies you one way or the other, that examines you? No. Do you belong to SWGFST? No, I do not. All right. Now, in the minute remaining, let me just ask you about this, about the digital camera issue. As, I know you didn't do examinations or comparisons in this case, but when you're developing prints, you are doing that with the intention of developing something that a latent print examiner can compare, is that correct? That's correct. So you want to try to get the best product you can for your examiner, correct? That's correct. And in that regard, you know that you, that it can be very helpful to an examiner to look at pores, correct? That's correct. And also to look at the shape of ridges, if possible, is that correct? Third level detail, correct. Yeah, third level detail. So we're not just talking about where they go and how they're laid out, but the actual shape of the actual ridge, is that correct? If needed, yes. All right, counsel, let's take our break. I have one more. Do you want to ask one more? Yes, then I don't have to start over tomorrow. I made everybody mad in the whole courtroom at once, all right. With the digital camera, you tend to not be able to pick up the pores and the shape of the ridges as well as a film camera. Isn't that correct, sir? Actually, we were able to get several prints with this camera that did show pore detail. In general, a film camera is better at getting the pores and the ridge shapes than the digital camera, correct? Object as to foundation. Sustained. Ah, there you go. Your Honor, could the court and counsel remain just one more moment after the jury's excused? Yes. Thank you, Your Honor. I just wanted to notify the court, we were able to resolve one of the issues that was pending before the court. Over the last break, I spoke with Mr. George Blankart, who is George Lopez's attorney, and we are agreeing they are withdrawing their opposition to the subpoena that had been issued by the defense. In fact, Mr. Lopez will be testifying for the prosecution, we expect, on Monday. Who's going to testify tomorrow? We do have a list. Would you like to know the list for tomorrow? Yeah, I'd like to know. Well, we'll finish this witness's testimony, Your Honor, and then perhaps Miss Romero, and then Detective Spinner with the fingerprints. And we figured that would take us through the day. And I think we talked in chambers about if we didn't have all the way through the day, that that was okay with you. Okay. We also have some other fingerprint techs that will be testifying. They're minor. They're short witnesses. All right. Thank you. Thank you.